Welcome to CNB. I'm Siddharth Pinayak Patankar. It's a brand new episode, a brand new week, and of course, still challenging times. So we urge you to stay home if you can and mask up no matter where you go. With that, let's get started on today's show, shall we? First up, it is the exciting subcompact SUV space. Yes, none of you seem to get enough of it. The market cannot simply get enough of it. There are now nine players in this space. It is one of the most crowded segments in India's automobile market and why not? There's a good reason why subcompact SUVs have been popular and which is why we keep seeing so many getting launched. Well, last year there was a lot of buzz around uh, the Sonnet from Kia and certainly a lot being said about all the big changes you're seeing around cars like the EcoSport or Nexon. So it was exciting when we had the Nissan Magnite drive-in at the end of last year and now it's the Renault Kyger. Now we've talked about the Kyger, we've showed you the review, but of course we have to pit it against its rivals. So what we did was instead of going into our usual subcompact rule of only going with the winner of the last shootout, we decided to bring in a couple of popular models. King Shook had a go at this shootout. I hope you enjoy it. One of the first concepts that you study in economics is perfect competition. And a near perfect example of that in the Indian automobile industry is the subcompact SUV segment. With the coming of the Renault Kyger, Indian car buyers have 9 car models to choose from, with each model getting multiple variants too. So, it is a problem of plenty, you see. So, place the three SUVs next to each other and it is clear that the Kyger is easily the most handsome looking car. We aren't big fans of the name but the looks, the design, typically suave and European. The slim LED daytime running lights up top with the headlights placed lower, both the Kyger and the venue follow the same concept. But the execution on the Kyger is definitely better. The Nexon gets a more conventional butch design which is pleasing to the eye and is likely to age well too. View the cars in profile and it is apparent that the Kyga gets a sportier crossover like silhouette with the squared and cladded wheel arches, stylish 16 inch alloys, roof rails and a spoiler at the rear. The rear of the SUV looks stylish too with pronounced haunches over the wheels and the smart C-shaped LED tail lights. The venue gets the most box-like profile and a sedate rear section, while the Nexon, we think, is slightly overdone at the rear. The Kyger is built on Renault Nissan's CMFA Plus platform, which also underpins the Nissan Magnite, its sibling, and the Renault Triber. In terms of dimensions, the Kyger is the shortest at 3991mm and is also the narrowest with a width of 1750mm. It gets a wheelbase of 2500mm which is at par with the other two SUVs. But the pleasant surprise here is that the Kyger gets the biggest boot among the three with a space of 405 litres. That's massive! The other two SUVs get 350 litres of boot space each, 55 litres less. The Kyger is also the shortest among the three SUVs here with a height of 1600 millimetres. Its ground clearance of 205 millimetres is just 4 mm lesser than that of the Nexon, whereas the Venue gets a ground clearance of 195 millimetres. The other noticeable fact is that the Kyger gets 29 litres worth of storage space inside the cabin. Very impressive indeed. Alright, so the rear seat in the Kyger is comfy in itself. 
there is enough headroom and knee room with the driver seat positioned according to my height. The thigh support is decent and the seats themselves are well bolstered. Rear occupants get AC vents and an armrest as well. The cabin is decently airy too. The rear seat of the Nexon is comfortable. In fact, it feels the most spacious here, offering better knee room and shoulder room. It is also the widest SUV of the lot and the features for the rear passenger stay the same as the Kyger. The venue feels the most cramped with regards to space at the rear. The knee room isn't as good as the other two SUVs and it feels less airy than the others. In terms of cabin space, it is the Nexon which takes the top spot in this comparison with the Kyger falling closely behind. In terms of overall fit and finish, the venue is still the best of the lot with the Kyger bringing up the rear and the Nexon slotted in between. The cabin of the Kyger feels well finished and the all black interior adds a sense of sportiness. It gets a 7 inch instrument console which is fully digital and changes its color according to the driving mode selected. Then you have an 8 inch floating touchscreen infotainment system which feels tactile and gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto along with other controls. But sadly, the Kyger is not a connected car in the true sense of the word. The Venue 2 gets an 8 inch touchscreen along with Hyundai's Blue Link connected car tech. Other standard features include a wireless charger, an Arcamis sound system, and a sunroof. Similarly, the top spec models of the Tata Nexon get the IRA connectivity system, a 7 inch touchscreen, sunroof, and smartphone connectivity. In terms of safety, the Tata Nexon is a 5 star crash test rated car by none other than Global NCAP. While the Venue 2 doesn't lag far behind, offering 6 airbags on the top trim compared to the Nexon's 2, both SUVs get ABS, tire pressure monitoring system. ESC and Isofix mounts for child seats. The Kyger gets 4 airbags on the top trim along with ABS and EBD. All cars get a lap belt for the middle seat at the rear. The Venue and the Nexon make more power and torque with their petrol engines. The Kyger falls significantly short. At least that's what it says if you look at the spec sheet on the screen. But how does this translate into driving performance and dynamics? Let's take a look. One of the reasons why the Venue won our last subcompact SUV shootout was because it offered better driving performance than the Sonnet. The Venue, with its 1 litre turbo petrol motor, feels like a hot hatch more than an SUV. It is quick off the mark, gets a refined motor, and a healthy swig of torque in the middle and upper limits of the rev range. Plus, the ride and handling was always one of Venue's core strengths. Still love the way it drives. The gearbox on the Venue is slick and works well when you're driving in the city or on the highway. The 7 speed DCT we sampled in an earlier comparison is perhaps one of the most fun gearboxes in the subcompact SUV space even now. The braking on the Venue is good, but a slightly sharper bite would have been better. The Tata Nexon's 1.2 petrol isn't what you would call a driver's car. There is a bit of lag at the bottom end and things smoothen out once you cross 2500 rpm. The engine and its BS6 guys is more refined than before. We aren't the biggest fans of the gearbox though, it is slightly clunky and doesn't feel as precise as the others in the Comparo. The ride quality though is the best. The suspension setup is slightly softer ironing out all the undulations on tarmac and offering a comfortable drive. In terms of handling, the Nexon has a light steering and is easy to drive in the city.
the Kaigo feels light and zippy. A good feeling to have when you're driving in the city. The 1 liter turbo feels peppy but lacks in refinement and power delivery when compared to the other two SUVs. The engine isn't the smoothest and you can feel a fair bit of NVH inside the cabin. Even though it does feel quick off the mark, the power tapers off towards the top end. But the mid-range seems to be a happy place for the Kyger. The response from the 5-speed unit is decent and it responds quick enough to throttle inputs. The Kyger is kind of lazy going into the corners thanks to its tall ride height. The steering feels a little too light for a liking and more weight would have been welcome. Renault seems to have decoded the formula to offer good ride quality on Indian roads. The Kaiga offers a plush ride with little fuss when going over broken tarmac. When Renault said it is going to price the Kaiga aggressively, the company meant it. With a starting price of 5,64,000 rupees and the top spec model price just above 10 lakh rupees, the Kaiga gets its pricing spot on. Of course, we are comparing prices of just the petrol models. The Hyundai Venue's price ranges from 6 lakh 92 thousand rupees and goes up to 11 lakh 76 thousand rupees. Similarly, the Tata Nexon is priced between 7 lakh 19 thousand rupees and goes up to a whopping 11 lakh 63 thousand rupees. So, the top end variant of the Kaiga is about 1.6 lakh rupees cheaper than the top spec variant of the Venue and about 1,55,000 rupees more affordable than the top spec variant of the petrol Nexon. Overall, it is the Hyundai Venue which still offers the best driving experience compared to the other two SUVs. The Renault Kaiga isn't that far behind, but the Tata Nexon is yet to play catch up, at least in terms of fun. The Venue offers the maximum features along with best fit and finish but loses out on cabin space. The Nexon has the best cabin space on offer along with a comfortable ride. The Kaiga does a fine balancing job of offering decent features, looks and an enjoyable drive experience. But the kicker is the extraordinary pricing. Keep price out of the equation and the venue is a better buy. But otherwise, it is difficult to build up an argument against the Renault Kaiga as the winner. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at Honda's Drive to Discover. Yes, it's an annual campaign the company puts up, but it's one where we end up having quite a blast. It's the 10th edition this year. And as always, while we had our stab at uh, the entire Honda portfolio, Seishan got his hands on the new city. Yes, we're still calling it the new city. It was our viewer's choice car of the year as well here at Car and & Bike. And uh, certainly one of the most exciting new launches in our market space. So spending time with it turned out to be quite a blast on over 800 kilometers, he managed to get in. We at Car & Bike certainly love a good road trip. And when Honda Cars India invited us for its latest edition of Drive to Discover, we jumped at the opportunity. Frankly, who wouldn't want to go on a cross-country drive for over three days from Bengaluru to Goa? with an entire fleet of Honda cars at one's disposal. Especially after being cooped up for a year due to COVID-19 restrictions. This is the 10th edition of Honda Drive to Discover and this year the journey is starting from Bengaluru and going all the way up to Goa. In between we'll be stopping at some scenic places in Chikmangaluru, Mangaluru and we'll be covering a little bit over 800 kilometers in this journey. So let's not waste time and hit the road. This year's Drive to Discover, which was flagged off from Bengaluru, saw the entire fleet of Honda cars. 
We have the Jazz, the Amaze, the WRV and the company's current flagship offering, the new gen Honda City. Our companion for day one was the Honda Amaze Diesel Automatic, which comes with a 1.5 litre oil burner mated to a CVT automatic transmission. Day 1 involved us driving from Bengaluru to Chikmangalur, covering nearly 285 kilometers. And for the most part of it, we were driving through good four-lane roads of National Highway 75. And having the Amaze Automatic for this leg of the journey certainly was a good thing. That said, the automatic version of the car makes just 79 brake horsepower, which is 20 bhp less than the manual version. And you certainly feel the absence of that extra punch. Furthermore, the CVT unit is also not the most responsive one out there. And its rubber band effect stood out like a sore thumb while we were driving uphill on the twisties of Mulayangiri on our way to our hotel. Right now, we are about 15 kilometers away from Chikmangluru and uh, we are heading towards Mangaluru. And uh, today's journey is filled with these ghat sections and we'll be covering some nice twisties around the way. And uh, our companion for today's journey is, of course, the new Honda City. And this one right here is the petrol version with the six-speed manual gearbox. While the distance we covered on day two was less, Driving through the ghat sections meant we had to be slow and careful. Which also meant we were spending more hours on the road. And the city was certainly a treat to drive. Thanks to its 1.5 litre motor that offers 119 brake horsepower and a meaty 145 Nm of torque, we did not miss the diesel engine. Some credit also goes to the slick 6-speed gearbox and the city's light clutch action. The major pit stop for the day was in Mangaluru, where the convoy had stopped to flavour some authentic seafood. However, the final destination for the day was still a little over 90 kilometers away, the coastal city of Kundapura, which is known for its beautiful beaches. Right now we are at Kundapura and this city is known for its uh, beautiful beaches. There are many around here and we'll be visiting two, uh, two of them today. And one of them is the Marwante Lagoon and the second one is the Kodi Beach. So let's head over there. The main aim for day 3 was to get that perfect early morning shots at Maravante Lagoon. And for this leg of the drive, we had the WRV diesel manual with us, powered by the tried and tested 99bhp 1.5 litre oil burner, which is one of the nicer engines that Honda has to offer. Our early morning drive ended at Kodi Beach, that could only be accessed by a small single lane road. And soon it was time to head over to the final destination. From the pristine coffee plantations of Chikmangalur to the coastal cuisines of Mangaluru to the beaches of Kundapura and Goa. This 10th edition of the Honda Drive to Discover certainly offered us different flavours of southwestern regions of India. While every Honda car made a strong case for itself, if we had to choose just one car to do this trip all over again, then we would probably go for the WRV. For now, we are eagerly waiting for the next edition of Drive to Discover. And that is a wrap here on CNB. We will continue to bring you a whole lot of excitement from the world of wheels. Yes, the market is starting to open up now and so we will be as responsible as we expect you to be. Please be safe, please take care of your health and always remember to wear your masks. Please wear your helmets and of course wear your seatbelts too. Bye-bye.